Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome to a fresh new episode of the Fitness Avengers, where we fight fat, frustration, and fitness fakes. My name is Tony Ariola, NASM Master Trainer with TotalBodyProject.com, and I'm on a personal mission to help you simplify the confusing world of fitness. Quarantine Monday, huh? There's going to be a lot of those, but today I'm going to try to help you figure out what you can do at home now to lose weight in the coming times. No diet, no problem. Hmm. Can you eat what you like and lose weight? Is it even possible? Today we're going to cover the foods to eat, the argument of processed versus unprocessed foods. We're going to get into some calorie talk. We're going to jump on, jump in and how to tackle weekends. We're going to have our giveaway for our water bottle. Thank you for all of those that jumped in and participated for our drawing. We're going to have our Ask the Trainer. So if you have a question that you want answered, ask it now, and I'll make sure to get that in the Ask the Trainer section. We're going to have our first ever client spotlight. Got a special story for you guys today and much, much more. So let's get into it. If you want to be entered for the drawing, go ahead and comment on the, on the comment section, Mighty Muscle, using the hashtag Mighty Muscle. That's for our little fitness Avenger guy. He's a little Mighty Muscle. <laughs> so comment that, and you'll be entered into our drawing. You can also just like hit hearts, not the angry, I guess not the angry or the sad face, but you get that like the happy, the wild face, any of those will get you in, into that drawing. Um, so eating what you like to lose weight. I've had this happen a few times where one of my clients will, will change his name because I hate to use my clients in these examples. It's a good story, but we'll call we'll say his name is Psych. <laughs> so Psych wanted to lose weight and he wanted to start a program and everyone always thinks that when they start with me i'm gonna give them this crazy program with all kinds of meals and carbs and proteins and whatnot but all i told psych was to eat uh, less bad now psych wanted to lose a fair amount of weight and he started and i remember his wife came up to me and we had like an event here and was pretty upset that psych wasn't losing wasn't eating as healthy as she wanted him to. And I wanted to tell her, well, I wanted her to say a lot of things, but <laughs> but what I wanted to tell her was that it, it, you have to meet people where they're at. And I know Psych was still eating Taco Bell. He was just addicted to fast food, but he still ended up losing over 25 pounds, which is amazing. Now he didn't have the best eating habits and that's what today's episode is about. How can you get the results that Psych got without like a structured, regimented program? So here's a big argument that I get into with a lot of people. Eating to lose weight versus eating healthy. Are they the same thing or are they different? Well, it turns out they're pretty different. To lose weight, you don't necessarily have to eat the healthiest. Lose, eating to lose weight is just about the calories only about the calories because you can also you can eat unhealthy you can eat unhealthy and lose weight or you can eat really healthy and gain weight so you have to you have to keep in mind that for weight loss now we're not talking about eating healthy um eating healthy versus unhealthy those are a different that's a whole different game for weight loss it really doesn't matter what you eat you can lose weight on taco bell on you guys have probably seen the movie uh super size me where they eat a bunch of like McDonald's and the guy gets really like fat and he's like bloated and he's like, oh no. There's also the opposite of that movie. It's called Downsize Me, where somebody eats the McDonald's every day and loses weight. Now, is that the healthiest? No, but actually he lost the weight. So when it comes to weight loss, it's not gonna it's not gonna necessarily matter what you eat. It's gonna matter how many calories you eat. So the actual intake of the calories. So the short of it is, is do you have to eat healthy to lose weight? Do you got to eat like salads, you know, greens, all oh, just grilled chicken, steamed, you know, broccoli. The good part is, the good news is I no, you don't. You guys saw me on my Facebook post. I was eating like a gigantic pizza. I think I just had pizza yesterday. It was really good. <laughs> don't worry, they delivered it outside and the guy had a bag on his head. So it was perfectly, perfectly okay. But you don't have to eat completely healthy to lose weight. 
is it easier? Well, yeah, there's it's easier for a variety of reasons. The biggest one is that it's going to be processed foods versus unprocessed foods, right? Whole Foods made a name for themselves and they're pretty big in this space because they promote a lot of whole foods. Now, where that name kind of came from was this argument of not eating processed foods. Now, processed foods is anything that comes inside a bag. So you're talking like your chips, your bread, uh, any packaging, like ice cream, things like that, things that we consider more like junk food. The problem with that is that those foods, like let's say, for instance, chips, is a different combination of fat, sugar, uh, salt. And it's basically when you mix these things up in the perfect combination, it's like a big old party for your brain. So your brain's like, ah, that, 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 that. Ow. Ah, that was delicious. The texture, the salt, the crunch, everything is so different. Such a unique, oh man, I kind of want some chips now. <laughs> it's such a new and fresh experience that your brain automatically wants more of it. Right, it's just like yeah, yeah, and what you want to think about for processed foods is you want to think of a guy in a lab coat that his job every day is to get you addicted to whatever it is that he's cooking. So if it's Doritos, if it's ice cream, if it's anything that's packaged, there's somebody, some evil food genius that's going into the work, and his job is only to get you addicted to whatever it is that he's working on. So that's hard, right? It's hard. It's you're obviously gonna eat it. You can eat a lot. You guys probably find that happens a lot more often than if you eat like unprocessed foods, like if you eat like whole foods. So it very you don't ever go through like fifty apples, <laughs> just like go crazy on the apples or or grapes, uh, because our brain actually gets tired of the certain the same number the same uh, taste in the food, so you stop eat a lot less. So eating whole foods, although you don't have to can actually help you lose weight, but because your brain's not addicted to it, you're not craving them and the calories are a lot a lot lower. They're what's called a nutrient, nutrient uh, dense uh, calories. So they're gonna be more filling, more fiber. It's just gonna be easier to eat less of it than like unprocessed. Cause I can, I mean, I can eat the whole bag of Doritos. All right, now it's time for an emoji party. Yeah, hi Courtney, hi Diana, you made it. Hope you had a good, good jog today. Yeah, go ahead and hit those likes, guys. Hit the loves, the wow, the aha. Uh -huh. Remember, and hashtag whether you're watching the replay or watching it live, hit Mighty Muscle next week. I'm actually going to give away a coaching call with myself. So a live coaching call where we're going to be going over your goals and how to help you. So make sure you hit Mighty Muscle in the comments, and you'll be entered in for that drawing. And that'll be at the end of next week's show. But this week, we're giving away that really cool water bottle. So to understand how you can eat what you like and lose weight, you're gonna have to understand the first law of thermodynamics, energy in versus energy out. So the way weight loss and fat loss actually works is your body takes in a certain amount of calories, right? This is what you're eating. These are like um, anything that you're putting in is energy, right? Food is energy. And whenever you move like ah, shaking, anything that you do, your body is powered by energy. So you have energy in, calories that you consume, versus energy out, which is exercise, movement, anything that powers your life, your brain, heart, all that stuff. So when energy in matches energy out, your body basically stays the same, all right? Now, if you're intaking more food, but you're not moving more, this little surplus, this extra stuff here, goes into, yeah, into oh, there's Chewy from Star Wars, he's, he's over hiding, <laughs> becomes fat. All right, your body works really hard. Calories are very valuable. So your body doesn't want to throw, throw those away. So it just stores it right here, right on the side, just, just chilling. So that's what happens when you eat more calories than your body burns. It stores it as fat. Now to lose weight, you would actually have to eat less calories than your body's burning. And this is a, a what's called a, a deficit or your body's actually going in and taking those extra calories taking them off from the fat reserves and converting those into energy. So that's how it works. If you eat more food and you move less, you get fat. If you eat less and move more, you get skinny. Pretty simple. 
To go faster, obviously eat less, move more. To get fatter, eat more, <laughs> move less. That's a good, good way to do it. But uh, ironically, no one's ever like, when people lose weight, they're like, oh my God, how'd you lose all that weight? But when people get big, they're not like, oh my God, how'd you gain so much weight? We all know how to do that. So now that you have the fundamental principle down, understand that because now you can eat whatever you want as long as what? That's right. As long as you're eating less calories than you're burning now. So the obviously the next question is, well, how many calories should I be eating? Well, there's a long equation called the harris bantic equation where it's like X, Y plus X, right? You can go that route, but it's just going to come out to the same answer as you had before, which is the quick way is to, just to add a zero to whatever it is you weigh. So if I weigh 200 pounds or 190, lucky I don't weigh that anymore. But if I did, then I would just add a zero and eat that many calories and I would be losing weight. Okay. So, but as you go down, so once I get to 180, I'm going to have to eat 1800 calories, 170, 1700. And, you know, you can kind of see, which brings me up to one of the biggest myths in fitness that I've fallen for was that people say, well, if you eat, eat, if you work out, you can eat whatever you want. And I'm here to tell you, I wish it was true, but it's not. It's just, it's just not true. If I eat whatever I want, I get fat no matter how many hours I work out. And I work out a lot of hours because I'm small. And as I get in better shape, I get more efficient. And as I become more efficient, guess what? I burn less calories, right? When somebody who's out of shape burns way more calories than someone who's in shape, right? Think about it as first time you go up and down the stairs, it might be pretty hard. After you've been doing it every day, it's going to get a lot easier. Same with hikes, swimming, anything that you do, your body gets more efficient at it. So the problem is as you get more efficient, you burn less calories. So it's actually harder to lose weight as you get in better shape. Yeah. Yeah, let that sink in. <laughs> Does that suck though, huh? I mean, I wish you could work out and eat whatever you want. <laughs> that would be like a dream. That's like my idea, my dream. I think that's where heaven is. But anyways, now counting calories. Here's another big argument. I get with people and I actually went out and got another certification so I can talk to these people who don't believe in counting calories, right? There's this huge, well, I don't count all calories are created equal. And how do we know if this is actually five calories and this is actually seven and yada, yada, yada. Wow. So my latest certification, which is certification number eight, uh, was from precision nutrition. And, you know, we had this argument of calories in calories out and should we count calories and long story short, whether you choose to count or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's like choosing if you want to ignore gravity. It doesn't matter. You can have an opinion on if you like gravity or you think it works or not, but these are the governing laws. So even if you choose to go a different way, like I only eat fruits and vegetables or I fast from here, net, net, the only way you're going to lose weight is to eat less calories than your body burns. And if you don't want to count those calories, then I get it. But that's just, that's exactly what you're doing. So if you don't want to count calories, I get it. It's just going to be a lot harder for you to get to your goal if you don't want to accept calories. And, and I get it. You don't have to count calories forever. All right? it's not, I'm not talking about from now to the end of life, you're going to be counting calories. You're only going to need to understand the value of calories. Let me put it to you this way. If somebody is uh, selling you, like say this mic, I'm having a willing, I'm not a mic seller by any means but i know how much i should pay for the mic or the water bottle or tree back up back there or or the bicycle i have some idea a pen right i have some idea of what things cost that's the kind of understanding you need to have with with calories when you go out to dinner when you're out with your friends you have to have an understanding of how many calories are what like how much is fried chicken how much is is the ice cream how much is the entree that you're typically eating as soon as you have an understanding of how many calories you're eating with your general things, it's about 30 to 40 same things that you eat. Once you get an understanding, then you won't have to count calories forever. But you always gonna have to know, like at least be in the ballpark of the value of those calories. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now, you can count calories and like log in your MyFitnessPal. Unfortunately, this is a very high skilled. Uh, it's a high skill thing to do because it's not easy. 
of everybody I trained, there's very few people that can actually log in and can consistently log in their calories. It's just hard. So starting there is an easy way to fail, right? The easier way to do it is by start eating by less bad. You know, I talked about that in our last video. So go to episode four. If you haven't seen that, um, I'll link to it in the description. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> um, but uh, logging the calories is a really hard skill to do. Start where you're at and go from there. Eat, switch Coke for Diet Coke. Uh, slow down what you're eating. Just be a little bit less bad. If you can do that, then you're well on your way to your goal. Which gets me to the next part about cheat meals, right? <laughs> so sometimes I meet trainers and I, sometimes I get meet people that are, you know, not so good conditions that tell me about, you know, when's your cheat meal? The problem is that cheat meals don't exist. And the best way I can explain cheat meals is they work exactly like money, like currency, right? So I call them, I call calories the currency of, of energy. So let's talk about Becky, right? Becky saves $5 a day every day. She says five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. For 29 days, Becky saved $5 a day. And the last day of the month, Becky bought a diamond ring. And now Becky's in debt. <laughs> well, Becky's dumb, right? It doesn't matter how long you were saving. It only matters how much. So if you blow it on Saturday and Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you just go way north with your calories. You're never, never going to lose weight. And that's where most people fail. It's always... The weekends, 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 weekends is the ones where people can just cannot get it in. I mean, <laughs> not get it in, but they can't execute on the weekends. The weekends is always the most most difficult time. So it's important to have like an action plan for the weekend. But if you can't execute the weekend, then it's very difficult to eat what you like and lose weight. Now you can also do the smart way and put like your your treat that you want for that weekend, put it in as your main meal for that weekend, and then structure around. So when I have like a giant pizza, I put in my workout, I put in, I'm gonna have basically coffee for breakfast, a really light lunch, and then I have my pizza. And then I can lose weight, eat what I like, and just be be happy, because I got I got to even some pizza. Even if it's quarantine pizza, still a good pizza. So where do you start? Start where you're at. Start where you're at, start where you're at now, and then just make little baby steps, right? You are the expert of your life. My job is only to guide you and to help you and provide tools for you to use, but ultimately you have to decide what's best for you. I can help you get there, but you have to decide, you have to do the work, but you have to know that that I'm here for you and I can help. You want extra help? Join our team, the Fitness Avengers. We have a private group here on Facebook. Uh, send me a link or hit Mighty Muscle in there, and I'll send you a link to invite you to join the group and join us. It's, all, it's awesome in there. We're all trying to get each other even skinnier. I'm trying to disappear actually, but. So in our very first ep episode of section of the client spotlight. So let me see if I can show Stacy. So Stacy, um, I was fortunate enough to train her and her husband, Eric, for their wedding, which was fantastic. This was, I think it was like 15 or 16 years ago. Beautiful wedding, uh, Pelican Hill, and they, they looked incredible. And then, you know, that was 15 years. I went on to, you know, a career at 24 Fitness. I was general manager, got fired, blah, blah, blah. Started my own company, worked my way. And I believe uh, Eric actually reached out to me about two and a half years ago around around uh, Christmas time and asked if I would train Stace again. And I hadn't seen Stacy for maybe a good, like, probably like 10 years. So when I saw her again, uh, we both kind of knew that things had changed. Uh, and Stacy at that time was 48, I believe. And so we started training and we got some goals and we kind of lollygagged that first uh, year. And it was it was hard. We got a better shape. Her knee pain went away. But we didn't get to right where I wanted her to get to or where she, more importantly, where she wanted to get to. Um, so we came up with a strategy. And turns out in uh, March, she was going to be celebrating her 50th birthday, which is a pretty big birthday and a birthday that means a lot to everybody. You know, once we, I think that's a marker that people, sometimes we feel like, hey, you know, 30, 20, 50, these are la landmark birthdays. And she wanted to feel and look her best. So we kind of drew a line in the sand and said, hey, by this day, you know, I want you to be proud of yourself, be proud of your body and be proud of how good you look. But the only way that happens is if we work starting now. 
And we laid out a plan probably like nine months ago to really hit it hard and be committed and to do, to work together as much as we could to make sure that this night was going to be a memorable night. And at first, Stacy didn't want to have a party. She didn't really like, want to have a celebration. And I don't really blame her. Probably the best, one of the best moments of my career was when she told me like, hey, I'm going to have a party, which means awesome, right? Which means, meant that we got to our goal which meant that everybody was happy. Er, Stacy and I celebrating. This wasn't this weekend. Uh, this was March, uh, March 7th. Uh, we had an amazing party. You can see how wonderful Stacy looks and how proud I am of her success. Stacy, if you're on here or if you jump on to hear this later on, really part of your uh, commitment, your effort, uh, what you do that night that we had is the reason that I exist. So thank you so much, Stace, for all your hard work. And uh, now we gotta make sure we keep it up because we got some pressure and it's COVID-15. We wanna stifle that guy down. So congrats, Stacy. Um, you are amazing. Yay. All right. Now for my our next part of the show, Ask the Trainer, where you guys can ask me anything. Well, about I guess, yeah, other stuff too, but I don't know how it would help you. And here comes our first question. And it's, do I need to give up carbs? Uh, yes, you actually do. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. You don't, you don't have to give up carbs. Again, like, like I talked to you about, talked about this whole show, you can eat what you like and lose weight. The trick is to understand what your caloric budget is and fit it in there. It's actually easier to get fuller with whole foods, like you know your grilled chicken, things that are lower in calories, that are higher in nutrients will fill you up more, and you'll find that. But in the beginning, don't worry about you know carbohydrates or proteins or fats. Don't make the challenge harder than it is, because if you worry about carb count, protein count, you're only gonna fail. Can we? I know because this is what I do. This is what I've been doing for 18 years. It's almost impossible to track all that stuff. And if you if you are, um, I, I think you're lying. <laughs> I would love to see your food log because um, even my trainers that are competing and doing all that stuff, nobody can keep it up forever. So the best thing is to get a really good understanding of the macro principles. So you don't need to give up carbs. You only need to understand how many cal calories those carbs are intaking and put them into your diet. So thank you. That's a really good question. And now it's time for our drum roll. No, it's not time for our drum roll. It is time for the drum roll, but it's time for our drawing. Let's see. Let's spin this guy around. All right. Let's see. Make sure you guys see. Oh, look at all those people in there. And I mix them up pretty good. And the winner is. It's in like Chevy Chase, right? Drum roll, family. Brrr. Diana Glass, yeah. Oh, not Diana Goldster. So close, Diana. Diana Glass, yeah, you win. You can see if you show you the thing. There you go, yeah. So let's see, I'm not cheating. <laughs> Congrats. So you are the lucky recipient of our water bottle slash phone roller. Um, so I will message you after this, get your address and send it out to you. We'll make sure we clean it with and purell it as well, since we know that virus is still out there. Um, and no, remember, guys, next week I'm giving away a free Zoom coaching session. Right? These are the sessions that I charge around seventy-five dollars an hour for. But I'm giving one away for free for you next week. All you have to do is comment Mighty Mouse, and then uh, you'll be eligible for the drawing. So I can go ahead and jump on the call and help you as much as I can. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and jump into our Facebook group, The Fitness Avengers, and learn as much as I'm teaching to help you. And it's a little more of a community. So we all kind of work together and try to help each other be the best versions of ourselves because this is difficult. Um, fitness is it's hard, but we all know both ways are hard. right? If you make a commitment to try to do your best, that's hard. But if you ignore it, that is also hard. So both ways are hard. You just got to pick the one, the heart that has gold at the end of the rainbow. Pick the heart with hope. Don't pick the heart that has no hope. Because even if you don't pay attention to the problem and be like, ah, whatever, Tony's full of blah, blah, whatever, and ignore me, this is not going to go away. 
you are going to have to do something until your doctor tells you like, hey, hey, by the way, this is not. you don't want to let it get to that. You don't want to let it get to that. Yay. Hi, Nadia. Woo, Diana, Courtney. Yeah. Woo. Dun, dun, dun. All right, guys. So please like, share, like I said, comment for a free video Zoom coaching session with myself. Maybe we'll teach you exercises too. Um, like and share if you're watching on, on YouTube. Like and share I, IGTV. Like and share. And like my, my good friend Tiger King says, I now have a show that's international. It's worldwide. <laughs> My show is international and it's worldwide. I can only thank you for tuning in. So thank you so much. Uh, you are the reason I exist. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you to all my awesome, awesome fans and supporters. I love you guys. I am just really pumped to be sharing everything that I know in fitness with you so that you can have what we all have. We all want happy, happiness and health. And that's my promise to you. So tune in next week. Where I'll be teaching you, I'll be telling you why 80% of the exercises that you may be doing or 80% of the exercises out there don't even matter. What? They don't even matter. Yeah. 80% of the exercises are not, I don't want to say useless. That was what I originally had. I went with pointless. So tune in next week and I'll show you exactly what exercises that you need to be doing. The main exercises that need to happen in your workouts in order to get the maximum benefit. And stay safe, guys. Again, if you're going to the beach, <laughs> stay away from everybody. And don't post on your stories or your IG because other people get really, <laughs> really upset. And I love you guys, and I will see you on the skinny side. Cue the music. Mm -mm -mm. The music pump. Yeah.